It is so good to see you. Okay, I can't see you. That was just to grab your attention. But now that I've got your attention, I want to give you a very warm welcome to our Every Nation N1 City online service. We're going to have a fantastic service this morning. Clear and the team is going to lead us off with some praise and worship. And then after that, Pastor Vanessa is going to bring us a word of encouragement. And I know that the word of encouragement that she's bringing this morning is going to bless you. It's actually one of my favorite topics. It is one of the best gifts I think God has given mankind. But it also comes with quite a hefty responsibility. So I'm really looking forward to that message. So let's just kick off this uh, service. Let's just bow our heads in prayer and let's just commit this time to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for being such an amazing God. We just come to your throne of grace, Lord. We just come before you and ask you just to anoint this service, just bless this time, Lord. We ask you to anoint the praise and the worship. We ask you just to empower the word, that the word will be empowered, that lives will be impacted, lives will be transformed. Not just now, but every time someone tunes in to hear this word, Lord. So Father, move in and amongst your people this morning and just have your way, Lord. We bless you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Enjoy the service, guys. My 
story ends with you. Your glory lives in me. I am alive in you. I am alive in you. My story ends with you. Your glory lives in me. I am alive in you. I am alive in you. My story ends with you. Your glory lives in me. I am alive in you. I am alive in you. My story ends with you. Your glory lives in me. I am alive in you. I am alive in you. You're the author of my life, and I will sing your praise. You're the savior of my soul, and I will shout your name, Jesus, Jesus. You're the author of my life, and I will sing your praise. You're the savior of my soul. Shout your name, Jesus, Jesus. You're the author of my life, and I will sing your praise. You're the savior of my soul, and I will shout your name, Jesus, Jesus. May your praises live in every word we speak And with every gift of breath we breathe away All the words that you have done consume our hearts When all the earth compares to who you are
at your face from royal sea you came down how can it be your majesty would reach for me you came down and you Heaven's glory took me, made me whole. My heart will sing at yours. Forever I am yours. From golden streets stars at your feet from royalty you came down how can it be your majesty My heart will 
I will be bringing the tithe and offering message this morning. Before I go into the word, let us take a moment to bring our hearts before the Lord as an act of worship. Because you see, the tithe is an act of worship. And we see this when Jesus is born, the Magi come and find him. And once they find Mary with the baby Jesus, it says that they fell down to their knees and they worshipped him. They then opened up their treasuries and they gave gifts unto him. Now, today we do not give gifts of frankincense and myrrh. We bring up our financial substance. And I know we're facing a time right now where it is very easy to become fearful. We're looking at the waves and we're looking at the wind around us. We, um, we, we face the very real threat of unemployment, of salary cuts, potentially not being able to pay our rent or to have groceries in our cupboard. But we are a people of faith. Jesus says, when I come to the earth, will I find faith? Because you see, it's faith that pleases God. You see, fear will always bring with it torment and terror. And in the absence of faith, fear will always be our natural response. I want to take you to Isaiah 54 verse 14. It says, in righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear. And from terror... For it shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of you, me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Here we see God saying that yes, fear and terror is going to gather and it's going to come against us. But because our righteousness um, is established on the cross, Jesus purchased our righteousness and because we are people that are righteous, we do not have to fear. We shouldn't tolerate fear, not one bit. I want to say thank you to everyone that has been giving so faithfully. And I want to encourage you to be a people of faith. Do not allow the enemy to bring the fear of lack and allow him to speak negative thoughts to you. I want to challenge you this week to spend more time in the Word of God, to build up your faith, and to start focusing on the promises of God. His promises are yes and amen. Before I go into prayer, I um, would like to draw your attention to the slide um, that will be coming up in a moment with all our banking details. We are working really hard to streamline our banking processes, and so it might change in a couple of weeks, but... Pray for us so that God can give us a strategy. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, when the enemy forges a weapon against us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that it will not come near us. Thank you that we are a righteous people. And Lord God, that your promises to us are yes and amen. You have established your word in heaven. You have magnified your word above your name. And so, Lord God, I thank you that you are able to give to us exceedingly, abundantly, more than we could ever ask for or imagine. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad that you could join us this morning. Let us pray as we go to God's word today. Father God, I just want to glorify your name this morning. I pray that you would come and be with each and every one of us. That as I share your word, as I speak your thoughts, Father God, that you would come and encourage, bless, and strengthen each and every one of us. I thank you that your word brings life. That as we just commune together around your word, that you would bring to remembrance everything that you have done for us, that we would know that we have choices to make in our lives and that we would choose wisely. I thank you that you would just come and shift who we are today as we glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. What I'm going to be speaking on today is about choosing wisely. We all get to choose wisely. We all should choose wisely. I woke up one morning in this week and I just had this very loud thought and it was saying to me, choose wisely. You know, first thing in the morning when you wake up, you, we have a choice. Am I going to live this day in a good frame of mind? Will I be positive or negative? Will I be in a mood? Am I going to put God first with my day? How am I going to live my day? Am I going to have faith in him? We choose that every single morning when we wake up. And so my next thought was, 
Choose wisely. And that is my sermon title today. Choose wisely. We get to choose wisely every day. Romans 6 verse 16 says to us, Do you, Don't you realize that you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. So we can choose every morning, every day, are we going to become a slave to worry and to fear? Because if we become a slave to it, that, then we are going to be obeying it. So let's not be slaves to fear and worry. In the book of Job, he spoke about distress, anguish, snares that came around him, sudden dread and terrors that would come in like a flood. But Job also says in Job 3.25, it says, what, For what I fear comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. Let us not fear, because those things can most likely come upon us. We're not going to fear. We're not going to worry. Choose not to fear today. So I get to choose, and you get to choose every day what we're going to do. Do you start your day? When you wake up, what is the first thing you do? Do you go to YouTube? Do you go to Facebook? Do you go to WhatsApp, check your messages? Or do we go to the Word of God? And that is what God is really challenging me. It's like you get to choose these things every single day. Choose wisely. We can only make that choice. No one can make it for us. I can get up in the morning and feel overwhelmed. I can feel overwhelmed with the lockdown. We're all in the same boat. Yes, we are. We all respond differently. But I can be overwhelmed by it. I can feel overwhelmed by homeschooling. To all the parents out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about, having to do your work and do homeschooling, teaching your children. And while I'm saying that, I just want to say a shout out to all the teachers. We are so grateful for all the work that you do. Thank you so much. I can feel overwhelmed by any uncertainty of what the future may look like. We don't know what the future looks like right now. We can feel overwhelmed with the health challenges that the world is facing. Family members, how are they doing? Do they have food? What are their jobs like? The underprivileged, the poor, feeling overwhelmed, the fact that they might be losing jobs, not have food. Feeling uncertain and overwhelmed by the finances, the economy, that's the country and the world found ourselves with salary cuts, losses of jobs. Do you know that the good news is that Jesus is there with us all the time? The good news in Galatians 1.15, it says, Before I was even born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. It's again, it's a choice. God chose me. So I can set my mind on that. So you know what, God, you chose me. I am called by your marvelous grace. I do not need to feel overwhelmed. I can choose each day that instead of feeling overwhelmed, I can choose that I'm going to have a great impact on my children as I teach them and give them the right worldviews. I can be grateful to be safe in my home with my family, that we are being protected. I can connect with my loved ones, with family, via WhatsApp, uh, telephone calls, hangout meetings. We're still able to connect. So we can choose to do that, and we can have that choice every day. I can choose to pray. You can choose to pray. We can choose to have faith in God and His faithfulness and His provision. And we can choose to put Him first in all that we do. Does the future scare you at the moment? The uncertainties, the unknowns? Ephesians 1 verse 11 says, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Let me read that to you again. He chose us in advance, because, and he will make everything work out according to his plan. God is not surprised by anything that is happening right now. I literally get a smile on my face when I just try and think about what is going on in the world, not because I'm trying to be insensitive, not because my heart doesn't break for those who are without work, without food. Those things are very real. But I can choose to look downwards and look around me and the circumstances and feel overwhelmed, or I can choose to look upward and say, God, you are still on the throne. You are doing something. And I can look at the bigger picture and say, this is all temporary. But I look to God. And the reason I can have a smile on my face, the reason I can have peace, is because I know who this God is. And I trust Him. I trust Him. He knows what He is doing 
all the time in my life and your life. All he says is choose today what you will believe. Choose today how you will live. Here's some good news. Here's some of the stats that we, found, we got this week. In our country at the moment, in this last month, compared to a year ago, the same month, our murder rate is down by 72%. The rate for rape is down by 87%. Attempted robbery down by 66%. Murder, sorry, robbery with assault down by 70%. Those are some of the good things that is coming out of this time. There's been no drinking and smoking. People are really starting to care about each other, their neighbors, the stranger in the street, the people that don't know. We are caring and reaching out. Children are getting to see more of their parents. And I know some of you do have to still work, especially those in essential services, and we really salute you and thank you. But for most of us, we're getting to see our children a whole lot more. When does that ever happen? Nature is restoring itself. Our rivers, our oceans, our lakes and dams, it's just flourishing. The animals are thriving. The earth is sighing a sigh of relief. And I'm not one of these big earthy people, but I can just see that it's just like, there's like restoration. There's everything coming back in line. There's less pollution from our cars and our airplanes and our factories. There's so much happening around the world that is good. Our healthcare systems, our education systems are being looked at and evaluated. Countries are making plans to feed the poor and the underprivileged and the vulnerable on mass scales, which you don't normally see. Those are good things. Do you not think that God is in control of everything that is going on, that he's got all of this in his hand? Yes, it comes at a great cost. And no, I'm not implying that God is causing all this, but the word of God says that he works all things together for good for those who love him. And across the world, we're a lot of people who love God. So he will make all things work together for his good. I really believe in then five or ten years' time, we're going to look back at this time, this 2020, and say, wow, look where we are today. Because of the things that happened in 2020, are we not so much better off? Let's look at the good things. Let's choose to look at that. 1 Peter 1 verse 2. It says, God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and his spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. He chose us long ago. And because of that, he gives us more and more grace and peace. Do we walk in that? Do we choose every day that that is our portion? I want to remind you of the life of Jesus. He had a very difficult choice to make. Jesus, who was 100% God, came to earth as 100% man and lived just as we do. And I think, I was thinking about this in reality, it must have been a huge adjustment for him, knowing that he is God, and yet he chooses to just lay himself down, know what he's capable of, but he chose a life, to live a life like you and me, mere mortal beings. He chose this for our sake, for your sake. He chose you and me for our salvation at a huge cost, as if just being a man wasn't hard enough and sacrificed enough, he chose to die on the cross for you and me, a humiliating and agonizing death. He anguished over that decision. But you know, he still had a choice. We will often read that story and just say, yeah, he was God and he went through the motions and he did this and did that. And we can read it like a Sunday story and it's a cute little redemptive story. It's real, it happened. He chose to live that life and to die that death for you and me. It was a choice he made. And even throughout that time, it was still a choice to, that he made. Drops of blood flowed from his brow. The night before Jesus was crucified in the Garden of Gethsemane, we read this in Luke chapter 22 and verse 42 and 44. Jesus was praying the night before he was crucified. He knew what was coming. He had a choice to make. He said, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. He was saying, oh God, if there was another way to do this, if you're willing, take this away from me. But I will lay my life down and I will do your will. And then it says, and being in agony, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. 
That was the agony he was in. I know Pastor Gareth referred to this a few weeks back when it was Easter time, and this, this is what happened because he had a choice to make. When we talk about the dro drops of sweat falling to the ground, it is actually a medical condition where one sweat will contain blood. The sweat glands are surrounded by tiny little blood vessels, and they constrict so much and rupture, and blood literally comes into your sweat. And the cause of this, when it happens, is extreme anguish. In the other accounts of the, the gospel, in the Gospels in Matthew and Mark, it's Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. That is what Jesus went through. His anguish was extreme. It was intense. He, being God, knew what was about to happen. He knew the fullness of what dying on the cross meant. And yet he said, I have a choice to make. And I choose to do this for those people that I'm bringing into relationship with God. I choose to do that for Vanessa. I choose to do that for each and every one of you listening. That is what Jesus did for us. He made the choice to die for you and me. And Jesus said to, says to you and me today, in John 15 verse 16, he says, you didn't choose me. You know, we often say, you know, I chose Jesus and I chose to serve him. Yes, we choose to serve him. But do you know that he first chose us? Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the, the Father will give you whatever you ask using my name. Jesus says, he, he says, I chose you. I chose to die on the cross for you and I choose you. So you see, we all have choices that we can make every day. Choose wisely. Choose faith. Choose peace. Choose love. Choose God. Each and every day. Choose to be fruitful as he has appointed us to be. Make this time count. Make your life count. Here's another choice that we have. In Matthew 7, verse 13 to 14, it says, You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide, for many choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and its road is very difficult, and only a few ever find it. Deuteronomy 30 Verse 15, it says, now listen. To all of you listening to me today, now listen. And this is the word of God speaking to you. Now listen, today I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, his decrees, and his regula regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you and the land that you are about to enter and occupy. Verse 19. Today I give you the choice between life and death, blessing and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. God is calling on heaven and earth to witness the choice that we are making today. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. I pray today that you will make wise choices, that you would choose wisely, that you would choose life, that you would choose blessing, and that you would choose Jesus. Let us pray together. I just want to say to you that if you do not know Jesus, if you do not know this Jesus who laid down his life to reach out to you and to bring salvation to you, a choice that he made and then chose to choose you and to love you, if you do not know him, I would love you to pray this prayer for me, with me today. And I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. Pray this in your heart or in a loud if you're comfortable to do this. But I want you to just pray this prayer with me today. Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I need you. I repent of my sins and I ask you to forgive me for living my life my way. Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me, for forgiveness of sins, for your salvation. I surrender and I ask you to come and live inside of me and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life, hope and peace. I am now your child. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time today, we would really love to know about it. We'd love you to get hold of us. 
We're going to put a number on the screen where you can phone us or even on Facebook. Just say, I prayed that prayer today. We'd love to just celebrate with you and help you in the next steps. For the rest of you, I want to pray with you as well because we need to choose wisely each and every day. Will you pray this prayer with me? Say, Father God, I thank you that you have given me the power to choose and to make choices. I to choose today to surrender to you. I repent for trying to live my life my own way, for walking in fear and unbelief. And I ask you to come and flood my heart with hope and peace right now. I choose to follow you. I choose to receive your peace. I choose to receive life. I make a decision to choose you today and your plans for my life as I go forward each and every day. And may you be glorified through my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you prayed that prayer with me today. Jesus has given us choices to make each and every day. Choose wisely. I pray that you would have an awesome week. Thank you for joining us online. We can't wait until we're going to get back together again. It might be a little while, but we just we still are standing with you, praying for you, and love connecting with you. So please stay on connected with us. We're going to be online if you're on Facebook um, on Sunday morning with us. We're going to be online for a little bit longer. Please engage with us. We'd love to hear from you. If we can pray for you in any way, if you have any needs, please let us know. We are really here for you. We love you and appreciate all of you. Have a great week and choose wisely. Amen. Thank you, Vanessa. Great message. Again, one of my favorite topics, that of the, the power to choose. And so if you haven't yet made a choice after that message to give your life to Christ, if you don't know Christ, you still have time to make that choice. Call the number on the screen. We will connect you with someone that can help you through this journey. So make the choice, phone the number. Remember, the choices you make today is going to be the life that you're going to live in the future. So make the right choice. Make a choice to live for Christ. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We really are a product um, of the choices we make. Moving on to some really exciting news. We have missed you in the Connect Lounge. We are missing Chris's cappuccinos. And so we have decided as a team that we are going to bring you a virtual online uh, Connect Lounge where we will be meeting with you after service on a Sunday on our different media platforms. That's Facebook. That's our YouTube. Bring a cup of coffee. Bring a virtual cup of coffee. Well, bring a real cup of coffee. If you don't drink coffee, bring something else. Bring a juice. Bring a real cup of coffee. I know I will be bringing a real cup of coffee. Bring a cup of coffee. And we just want to engage with you. Um, there's mm -hmm. lots of exciting things happening. We're launching our online um, prayer, which will be a live mm -hmm. prayer line. That's you great. can actually phone us directly and there will be a human on the other side that will pick up that phone and we'll be praying for you. We also have the launch of our newsletter that will be um, coming out soon. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. So lots of good things happening behind the scenes. Lots of hard work going on behind the scenes. Some, some changes that are happening. Some good changes all to keep us connected to you. Keep us connected as a church. And just keep the, the kingdom of God, keep extending the kingdom of God because we live to love and honor God, love people, make disciples that will transform society. So guys, have a blessed Sunday afternoon. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon. We love you guys. We miss you guys. And we will see you soon. Absolutely. God bless. Bye-bye. Amen.